Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now. Jumping into the latest Eagle news and rumors, some really interesting stuff regarding Howie Roseman a little bit later on in today's video. First, though, Eagles Broncos on Sunday, a desperate chance to get a win, maybe get to four and six. Who you got? Type E down below for Eagles or type B down below for the Denver Broncos. All right, so we begin today's episode talking about the draft. And again, we're not really at draft season yet. I think the Eagles season is still technically alive, even if it is on life support. But there is a new report coming out regarding Howie Roseman and scouting quarterbacks that needs to be mentioned because it's actually kind of uh, significant and historically is not something that normally happens. So GM Howie Roseman will be at the Pitt UNC game tonight. Now, filming this here on a Thursday, and you go, okay, that's not that big of a deal. Obviously, Howie Roseman probably goes to a lot of games to scout players. But the problem is, is that's not necessarily the case. Like Historically, Howie Roseman does not attend college football games to personally scout players. Now, of course, he's attending this game tonight because there are two top quarterback prospects playing each other. One is Sam Howell of UNC, and the other is Kenny Pickett of Pitt, who many people consider to be the number one quarterback in the 2022 NFL draft. So the fact that Howie is there in person, and again, it's at Pitt, so it's not like it's a far drive from Philadelphia, but still is definitely of significance and of at least worth noting because I think it might indicate Philadelphia could be looking at at least doing a lot of research and a lot of due diligence on the top four quarterbacks here and this upcoming NFL draft. And Mel Kuyper Jr., of course, his favorite quarterback in this draft is Kenny Pickett. He likes him more than Malik Willis. Mel Kuyper, uh, like I said, is a Kenny Pickett fan, whereas Tom McShay is a Malik Willis fan. Here was Kuyper's thoughts on Kenny Pickett. Quote, Pickett is making a leap not unlike Joe Burrow from two seasons ago. After his impressive performance against Clemson, I'm ready to put him on my big board. Fifth-year senior has been tremendous this season, completing 68.9% of his passes with 23 touchdowns and just one interception. He ranks third in the country in QBR. He has 18 career rushing touchdowns. Pickett was up and down the past two seasons, throwing 18 picks and averaging 6.9 yards per attempt. He's up to 9.2 this season. He is accurate to all three levels of the field. He has shown patience in taking checkdown throws when necessary and has good zip on his throws, end quote. So Pickett vastly rising up the Mel Kuyper big board. And again, I think he is considered by Kuyper at least to be the top quarterback in the upcoming 2022 NFL draft. Now, there are essentially four first-round quarterbacks we expect to go in the first round. Again, all this can change. It's still so darn early. But Kuyper's top four in no particular order, I think, are the same top four that, uh, of course, top, uh, Topic Shea has and the same that I have as well. Pick it out of pick. Matt Corral out of Ole Miss. Desmond Ritter out of Cincinnati. He will continue to rise. He currently is not slated to be a first-round draft pick on most mock drafts, but he'll get into the first round because he's a quarterback. And Malik Wills out of Liberty, who we talked about uh, in the past being the guy that Todd McShay says Philadelphia should take because he's very similar to Jalen Hurts, except for a better throw of the football, according to, of course, uh, you know Todd McShay. Now, I'm not a big fan of Malik Wills. Looked terrible in this game uh, last week. He threw three interceptions and did not look that great. But either way you look at this, there are four quarterbacks which Philadelphia can possibly take a run at with their three first-round drafts. Picks, and they have a ton of them. Obviously, Miami there is what the pick looks like right now, number three overall. Their own is number seven, and then the Colts pick with Carson Wentz uh, is number 14, which is seemingly very, very secure right now, securely the Eagles pick due to the fact that Carson Wentz has been playing 98 point whatever percent of the Colts snaps this year. This all comes down and around Jalen Hurts, right? If Jalen Hurts is not the quarterback of the future, according to, I mean, unfortunately, he's the one who makes the decisions, but Howie Roseman, they will go ahead and draft a quarterback. Now, if he thinks Jalen Hurts is going to be the starting quarterback next year, as I do, then you got to kind of sit back and be like, okay, then maybe they're just going to do their due diligence on a quarterback and then ultimately decide to go defense. As we talked a lot about here on the show, that is what I think Philadelphia should do. I think the Eagles should run with Jalen Hurts one more year. I think I've seen enough from him to at least tell me that he can he can win you games next year. Now, whether he is going to be the quarterback of the future, I do not know yet. But I keep emphasizing how important it would be for the Eagles to spend their three first-round draft picks on positions of need and not go for a quarterback. I truly believe they can get a pass rusher, a corner, and a linebacker in the first three with their three first-round draft picks. This defense can go from worst to first. I mean, it can become very, very good next year in a very short amount of time. And quite frankly, they've missed on a lot of defensive draft picks over the past couple of years and need to hit on some. And so while drafting quarterback is fun and sexy and we'll get a lot of headlines for the next you know six to eight months, whenever we get to the draft, I do think Philadelphia should go ahead and not take a quarterback back in the first round. What do you guys think? An ad break right here during the uh, uh, YouTube video. Score down below and answer the pinned comment. Will the Eagles draft a quarterback in 2022? Type one down below for yes or type N down below for no. Uh, let's move over here to the Odell Beckham Jr. news of the day. And again, we're filming this here on a, Tuesday, on a Thursday morning. So by the time you watch this, maybe he signed somewhere. But the important thing to note is that it's not going to be Philadelphia. I think we feel very confident in the fact that Philadelphia uh, is not going to go ahead and be a, uh, a, a in the mix for Odell Beckham Jr. As his top three teams, according to multiple reports, are not Philadelphia. And again, the main reason that the Eagles would not be in contention right now, in my opinion, is because OBJ says he wants to play for a contender. And the Eagles are 3-6. and six. The Eagles have, have a lot of money, but I don't think that they're going to have enough to go ahead 
ahead uh, and convince OBJ to pass up on the top four landing spots, according to all the reports out there, ESPN, Fox Sports, because those top four spots are all contenders minus one, right? Patriots are a contender in the AFC, or at least a playoff contender. I don't know if they're a Super Bowl contender. The Packers seem to be the leader in the clubhouse. That's where I would go if I was OBJ, because you get to play there in Rodgers. You get to play alongside, um, uh, obviously, Devontae Adams. And I think his, his, his goal right now, at least from what I've heard, is that OBJ wants to, you know, w- w- go for a chip this year and then maybe sign a massive contract in the offseason. So you, you go to the Packers, you can win a chip, and then sign a big offseason extension with somebody else. Saints are also on the list right now. I don't understand that one. I don't know why he'd rather play for Trevor Simeon over a guy like Aaron Rodgers. The Seahawks are out there too, but Seattle is, you know, kind of in a, in, a, in a tough spot in their division. I think they're probably a wild card team in the NFC, but they're not going to be a division winner because obviously the NFC West is really tough. So we'll see where he goes. Obviously, if he signs with Philadelphia, we'll come on here and break it all down. I just think it's very, very unlikely. And with the reports coming out saying that Philadelphia did not make the final list and that OBJ wants to be at a contender, it makes sense. So if he does go anywhere, subscribe down below, hit the subscribe button. We'll cover it here on the channel. And again, the main issue here is that it's not money. Like the Eagles have money, but they're also three and six. If the Eagles were four and four right now, I think they'd have a legitimate shot at OBJ because you can give him the most money. I think that you repair the ability to play with Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith and money and a winning-ish record, five and three, four and four, whatever it could be, maybe we'd be an actual option. But the fact that we're three and six right now, three games out of 500, which is like, I mean, that's... It's important to note, three games out of 500, despite the schedule being easy coming up here, I think OBJ is going to go somewhere where there's actually some winning happening, and if I was going to go ahead and pick for him, I would choose Green Bay. I think that is the best spot to land. What do you guys think about the um, the priority of the wide receiver spot going into next season? Like, next offseason, how high of a priority is it for the Eagles to add another wide receiver on a scale of 1 to 10? What do you guys think? Is it a 1 being a not a high, a high, a high priority, or a 10 uh, meaning it's a big priority? Let me know down below in the comment section. Again, OBJ, good player. You see the stats on your screen. Um, I, 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 it's not done anything special this year. I, I talked about wanting him in, in Philadelphia a lot here on, on the channel, but it's not going to happen. And so I think we should go ahead and move on. Now, before we go ahead and get into um, some interesting injury updates, as well as a Miles Sanders update as well, quickly here, uh, my picks of the week. So go to chatsports.com, forward slash Eagles bet, promo code is Eagles125. I feel really good about these picks. I think I'm going to go at least four and one. Like I feel really, really good about these five. What if I just win them all? Right? We just win all the bets this week. Um, Jaguars plus 10 of the Colts. I, I, I continue to root against the Colts winning, even though I think Carson. And wins. I, you know, I wanted to be successful. I, I, I appreciate Carson wins, but hopefully Jags can cover. Browns are going to win outright against the Patriots. That one's easy. Falcons minus, or sorry, plus ten at the Cowboys. If they are to beat the Cowboys upright or, or uh, outright, and the Eagles win on Sunday, maybe the NFC East is actually open. Kind of, not really, but we'll see. Big Falcon fan this weekend. Uh, Se- Seahawks Packers give me the under forty nine and a half, and Rams minus four at the 49ers on Monday night football. Those are my bets of the week. You guys can jump in on those as well. at Chatsports.com for slash Eagles bet. Promo code is Eagles one two five. Quickly here to the short, quick news. We start with Jordan Howard. Mentioned him yesterday needing more playing time. Well, he's going to get that as he's officially been signed to the roster. I don't know why it took so long, but he was a practice squad guy who kept getting called up, and now he officially is on the 53-man roster for the remainder of the season, which is great news because he has been absolutely fantastic and looks to be the feature back, obviously, on Sunday against the Denver Broncos. Now... The feature back in waiting, of course, is the injured Miles Sanders with the ankle injury that happened in Week 7. He was seen at practice without a walking boot, which is the first time we've seen him at practice without the boot. That's good news, although he's still not clear to come back until Week 10, which, of course, uh, is 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 coming up. Really, it's, it's Week 11 because this week is Week 10. He's not clear to play this week. Next week is the first opportunity that Sanders has to come back to the football field, and based on everything I've seen, I think he has a chance to go ahead and do that. Final bit of news here, and this is coming via uh, Nick Sirianni at the podium yesterday. He mentioned that quarterback coach Brad Johnson, sorry, Brian Johnson, uh, has been moved onto the football field during games. So if you don't know what's going on, Brian Johnson was the Florida offensive coordinator, signed to be Jalen Hurts quarterback coach, big fan of each other. They like each other a lot. He's been up in the booth for basically the entire season. For the past two games, they moved him down to the sideline. You can make the argument the Eagles offense have played a lot better since doing so. Now, they run the football a lot more, and so I don't think how much, I don't think Brian Johnson has a big impact on that, but it is worth noting that Johnson is down on the field now. Uh, really being able to interact with Jalen Hurts actually during games versus just being kind of a phone call away because he's up in the booth. All right, there you go. Ultimate for today on a loaded Philadelphia Eagles now on a Thursday. A lot going on, a lot to break down. I will be watching, at least for a little bit, the Pitt versus uh, um UNC game, because if Howie Roseman is watching, then I should be watching as well. We'll see what the Kenny Pickett hype is all about, as well as Sam Howell, though I'm much more high on Pickett than Howell, because Howell's been a little iffy this year. But we'll keep an eye on that, as well as the rest of the things going on uh, in the land of Philadelphia. Mailbag video coming up later on this weekend. Stay tuned for that. But for Philadelphia Eagles Now, I'm your host, Thomas Mott, as we, of course, are out of time. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday afternoon.